In episode one of our warfare research series, we went up against Chinese lamellar armor. As we were just starting out, our testing loadout was not perfect, especially when it came to the arrows. Since then, we've acquired recreations of tanged Ming arrowheads that were carefully researched and handcrafted. We're also now shooting them with greater kinetic energy and momentum. One of the frequent requests we've seen in comments is to rematch the lamellar armor with our upgrades. So we bring you episode three, Lamellar Revisited. During our previous outing, the lamellar proved quite a tough opponent. The armor panel consists of a series of laced together one millimeter spring steel plates, two millimeters in overlapping areas. In the first lamellar episode, we used aluminum and carbon arrows, as well as a socketed wood arrow with a generic rhombic head. In the majority of shots, the plates were either dented or scratched. Because we took a lot of shots, many at closer range, we did manage to break a plate and unfasten laces to leave openings in the armor. But those results were a consequence of multiple trauma points in one area. The wood arrows we used either snapped or failed at the socket, and the arrowhead was left deformed. Hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll have a better idea of what kind of damage quality, historically inspired arrows can inflict. This is an excerpt from the Ming scroll painting, Wokou Tuzhe, which depicts a battle between Ming forces and Wokou invaders. Here, the Ming officers are wearing lamellar armor. Lamellar armor was popular across Asia for its protective and mobility benefits. Here is the lamellar tester from episode one. And here is the Ming arrowhead, the leaf head from episode two. So if I run the HRC 60 pick over the leaf head, it sticks a bit. If I run the HRC 655 pick, it slides a bit over the leaf head. So the leaf head is probably um, you know, between 55 and 60 in terms of hardness. Now, if I run the HRC 55 pick over the lamellar tester, there's a little bit of friction there. I feel a little bit of stickiness right here. Whereas if I run the 50 pick on here, a little more sliding. Again, the 55 pick. A little bit of a little bit of stickiness there. Um, definitely more stickiness with the 60 pick. So I would say that this metal in the lamellar is probably closer to 55, maybe between 50 and 55 hardness. In this episode, we'll be using the same bows and the same arrows, respectively, that we used in episode 2 versus the Brigandine. Both bows are Tehran's made by MR bows. At full draw, the poundage of Blake's bow is 110 pounds, and the poundage of Justin's bow is 113 pounds. The arrows we'll be using weigh from 1,277 grains to 1,530 grains. A link to video of our measurement process, which includes the weighing of the arrows and the chronographing of the arrows, can be found in the description below. As always, we'll be using thumb draw and practicing a Ming Chinese branch of military archery sourced from Gao Ying's 17th century archery treatise. Today I'm at Ohlone Archery in San Leandro, California, in the Bay Area. And I will be shooting from 20 yards at the lamellar armor. 
This is the lamellar setup, similar to episode one. We have it hanging over a target core, backed with a towel. Um, this time, actually, this has an extra layer of, of a shirt underneath it. And then at the ends of the lamellar are suspended two weights in order to kind of pull this down and stretch it out. Because as you can see, it's not super tight on there. There's a little bit of looseness. hit this time. So that was a straight hit in the center here. And we bounce back as well. over here so I think the arrowhead is even more dislodged than it was before the shaft is definitely bent might be hard to see yeah you can see a little bend there structurally though it seems to be intact all right so after reviewing that chisel shot I'm pretty confident that this here is our hit. And to back that up, you can see the slide of the shaft. So a pretty neat indentation there. Bent the plate a little, but did not make it through. So it looks like this leaf arrow simply bounced off. It is intact though. This appears to be new damage here. Lock knocked out a lace in the process. So I can get a close up here. Yeah, this appears to be where the new strike took place. 
This plate is split over here. Here we have our leaf deflection. I think even more blunted as far as straightness goes. Still pretty straight. Here is our hit. So you can see it left a pretty big gash in the plate there. Deformation on the back side. So a significant portion of the leaf did make it through, probably up into the spot where it fully widened, but it did end up deflecting. Okay, so it looks like the diamond actually entered where one of the holes is punched for receiving the lacing. And it kind of continued from there and tore into the plate. Hard to get a grip here. There we go. Definitely some bend there, you can see. Pretty good size hole there actually. We hope you enjoyed our second round against the Chinese landlord. Uh, this is something that Blake and I have been looking forward to for a very long time, so it's good to get a second go. One of the advantages of keeping detailed measurements is that we can revisit old armors and see which variables we can change to have an effect, to change the result of the armor test. So uh, with a lamellar, of course, you know, there's always the potential threat of an arrow weaving through the gaps and it, getting a direct puncture of the wear underneath. Uh, but in this case, in this episode, we got to see what would happen if you could get direct hits on the lamellar plates using new arrows and more kinetic energy. In episode one, our arrows are a little more improvised. Uh, they tended to break on impact and because we had a little less kinetic energy at, in that episode, the, we needed multiple hits in order to damage the lamellar armor. Now, episode three, we, we feel our equipment was an improvement on that. The arrows were more durable, thanks to the tanged arrow, arrowhead construction that kept the arrowhead attached to the shaft. And also because the shapes of the arrowheads themselves increased the damage potential that we had at our disposal. Now, um, I'll, we'll put the chisel head aside because the chisel head, although it was effective against the brigandine, it wasn't as effective against the lamellar. And part of that is because we think that the, the minus head shape of the chisel distributed the pressure at the point of impact. By contrast, the leaf and the diamond were able to pierce or break individual plates. And we view that as an accomplishment for this episode. Um, we suspect it's because that single point of impact increases the pressure 
um, at the contact point. And so that increases the damage potential there. So that just goes to show you still need to choose the right tool. It's not just a, enough to have the right amount of energy in there. You have to have the right shape. All that said, this was a seriously tough armor. That was unrealistically strong. Um, it was one millimeter spring steel. So that means in the overlapped regions, you'll have as much as two millimeters of protection. Now, we've been told that this specimen was more dense than historical armors. So historical armors luckily had thinner plates. You know, they were lighter, so the plates had to be thinner. Um, so an open question is, you know, what would happen if we had used thinner plates on lamellar? Instead of spring steel, what would have happened if we used mild carbon steel? Would that armor still held up as well? So, um, you know, that's one of the open questions that, that we would have, you know, after this episode. In addition to, you know, even if the core wasn't pierced after being hit with the leaf head or the diamond head, uh, you know, what is the blunt trauma that would have been experienced by the wearer of the armor? That's still an open question that we want to address. Um, you know, what would happen if we had even more kinetic energy? You know, does that mean that, you know, Blake and I have to train up with even heavier bows to see if we can get a clearing pierce of a very strong lamellar armor. Now, personally, we think it's a good thing that the armor was tougher. Um, you know, this series is not always designed to have bows and arrows come out as a champion. You know, we would only get one side of the picture. When the armor is able to stop a strong arrow, then we learn something. You know, we're in the business of gathering data points and to learn something with each experiment that we conduct. We would like to thank Uman Carpe and everyone else who has supported us on Patreon. Please consider supporting our future projects by joining patreon.com slash thewayofarchery. We'd also like to give special thanks to everyone who has helped us with equipment and special thanks to those who helped in the making of this film. Until next time. <laughs>